Hey there, Mr. Terry, high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, we're checking out another video from that channel I can't pronounce. Kurzgesagt, in a nutshell. And this seems like a follow up to the last one I checked out that was recommended to be about ants. And that was super fun. It was about ant mega colony, this ant empire. And it looks like in this one, the scale is getting even bigger because it's called the World War of the Ants. Now, one of the fun things I think we did in this last video, uh, they would talk about the different types of ants and how they kind of dominated other parts of the world. And we were trying to make historical parallels with other empires in the world. And I got a lot of good, funny feedback and just kind of, uh, I don't know, fun suggestions about how we could compare it to, you know, the actual empires of the past. But with this one, maybe we can find some parallels with the world wars or something. And by the way, I came prepared today. I got the uniform on. I got the helmet. I'm ready for war. And if you didn't see that video, I'm going to link it down below. Check that out after you check this one out. And this original video is going to be linked down below. Make sure you're supporting that. All right, let's check it out. To war. Some groups just don't get along. Yep. Every day, millions of soldiers fight a merciless war on thousands of fronts, and it's been going on for over 100 million years. Also the Balkans. The World War of the Ants. All right, who are the instigators here? I did say something about army ants. Who are those guys ants most like? Ants are ancient beings Germans. that arose around 160 million years ago and took over a wide variety of ecological niches so successfully that they became one of the dominant animals on planet Earth. Yep. Today, they count more than 16,000 different species with over 10,000 trillion individuals. If the ants come against us and want to take over the above ground from the humans, we're each going to have to kill 1,250,000 ants. If I was a betting man, I might take the ants. Collectively, ants alone make up 20% of the entire animal biomass on land. That's so crazy. Similar to humans, their recipe for success is collaboration. Right, so the ants. While a single ant is pretty useless, together they are able to achieve yeah. stunning feats. Is there a more collaborative animal after humans and ants? I don't know, is there? Let me know. They construct complex colonies, care for livestock, pursue agriculture, or have complex symbiotic relationships. I mean, humans are kind of robotic of course, like they are, right? And, wage war. They Even also among serve. The <laughs> humans are like that because they also will just serve women, right? Like the queen. In species, a constant state of conflict is pretty common. Yeah. Skirmishes, raids, and full-on invasions other, are happening every day, causing millions of casualties. Let's look at some yeah, of the most about interesting in the ones video. in a series of videos. Gosh. In this one, the uh, The one ant. from before was the Argentine ant. How they came to, because of migrations and stuff, human migrations, they came to go from uh, South America and then they were like all over North America as well and all over the world. Those guys were nuts. They were brutal too. I forgot who we figured that, who, uh, or figured out who they were. I think we said maybe they were the Romans. All right, Esoton, Ecaton. <laughs> A swarm made for war. The army ant group consists of about 200 different species. Army ants do not build nests. They live a sort of nomadic lifestyle with groups of millions of individuals. Okay, they're the Mongols. Okay, that's, that's, our, that's our current parallel. On a hunt, some species form large columns up to 100 meters long, killing and immediately dismembering every insect or small vertebrate they encounter. Also the Mongols. The biggest the hunting parties can kill up to 500,000 animals per day. <laughs> also the Mongols. Some <laughs> army ants specialize in hunting and consuming other social insects like termites, wasps, and especially other ants. Yeah. Wasps are fierce and may seem invulnerable, but if a swarm makes its down. way to their colonies, they don't even stand a chance. Okay, yeah. The much bigger They're and nests. stronger wasps might kill a few of them, but they are quickly overwhelmed. This is, this is where they're a little bit more of like Red Army, um, like Stalin World War II, where it's like, we outnumber them and we're just going to use our numbers and just throw in casualties and they can't stop all of us, right? Okay, so it's the Mongols mixed with the Soviet Red Army. That is brutal combination. Even if their queen survives an attack, the army ants steal the colony's larvae and quickly devour them. That's Mongols. There is no they used to steal each other's uh, family members. When army ants discover another ant them, colony, they immediately attack. 
Now you might think this would be a more even battle, but it's not. Because army ants act as a social unit, they are especially dangerous and effective. But okay, so they're very coordinated. All right, Mongols still go in there. Most army ants are not particularly impressive individually, but they can overwhelm their victims with sheer numbers before the victim colony can mount an effective defense. And so invasions Blitz tend Creek. to be won by the attackers, and the prey colony is damaged significantly or is exterminated. Interestingly, army ants don't fight army ants. When two swarms encounter each other in the wild, they either pass through each other, ignoring the other swarm, or both colonies just move away. They're like, hey, you're the homies. What up, dude? Okay, how's it going on the east side? Oh, it's good. How's it going on the west side? Oh, we're good. We're kind of messing with them south siders. Oh, you got problems with the south siders? We'll come down there and help you out. All right, I love this. They're very tribal, it sounds like which makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. Army ants that fought other army ants probably eradicated themselves millions of years ago. You know what that reminds me of? This reminds me of like the Assyrian Empire. So ancient Mesopotamia Assyrian Empire had this ideology that tied with their religion that warfare needed to basically be a constant state for you. And if you stopped trying to attack or conquer, that your civilization would die with it. And that hyper aggressiveness is also going to be your downfall because if you lose one battle the whole system collapses your whole ideology collapses your whole religion collapses and then you're going to be lost and that's actually what happened then they had their you know great years like any i guess hyper aggressive species would have for a while but it looks like those guys went down like the assyrians fought other army ants probably eradicated themselves millions of years ago Indeed, they're so that deadly nice middle zone, that other ant species had to specialize to survive their presence. Here's the Mongols Many kidnapping species the other just panic and families. evacuate their nest when they notice army ant scouts carrying as many larvae with them as they can in order to return and rebuild after the attack. Other species have invented living bunkers since fighting Ooh, is so head. futile. They big have brain. worker classes that have big square heads. <laughs> when army Nerd. ants show up, they use them to block the entrances to their <laughs> nests, so the attackers have to give up after a while. <laughs> That's awesome. They use their own heads as a plug. Dude, they're just like, nope, y'all ain't getting in here. Y'all get, you gotta keep moving. Y'all ain't getting in here. I love that. That's so funny. So the big head did have good evolutionary purposes <laughs> plugs up their home that would suck to be that guy say hey hey, hey jim uh your time to block the hole with your head of the big angry ants that want to come in but not everybody is afraid of army ants leaf cutter ants form some of the largest and mm. most complex societies Who are these of guys? any animal other than humans they live in extensive nests, many meters deep and across, harboring millions of citizens with a highly sophisticated division of labor. Like huge mm. soldiers, 100 times more massive than a worker. Their sole purpose might be to defend their colonies what? against army ants. All right, there's so many different things, but I'm trying to think of uh, what would be the best parallel for this social organization. What do you got for me? Let me know down below. They still have a nemesis though. The diet of the army ant species Nomomyrmix azenbeckii consists mostly of the larvae of other leaves? ants. Compared to other army ants, they have a more robust soldier caste. So far, they are the only known species that can successfully attack a mature colony of leafcutters. When they find a leafcutter colony, hundreds of thousands attack in a long column. The moment the leafcutter ants notice the army ant attack, they go into crisis mode and immediately alert their soldiers who very quickly swarm to the site of attack. Okay. A front line yeah, develops who are these that can guys? be a few meters wide and up to a parallel. meter deep. Oh. The leafcutter soldiers go head... You see that? They're like sieging un uh, below them. Siege warfare. Oh, this could be a lot of different things. Is this like the Greeks? Maybe it's like the Greeks incorporated like like I'm thinking like Alexander the Great, maybe incorporate some of the, the just superior warrior class of the Spartans into that. Maybe that's what they are. Then they get this, uh, you know, siege warfare. That's a good one, right? You got a better one for me? A few meters wide and up to a meter deep. The leaf cutter soldiers go head to head with the army ants, lock in on them and try to cut through their heads. Smaller leaf cutter workers help by grabbing the enemies. Small teams carry out attacks behind the front line where they dismember their enemies by ripping their legs from their bodies. 
The attackers, meanwhile, try to swarm their victim soldiers and sting them to death in a mob. Oh. Despite the powerful defense and the determined response, the army ants are still superior in numbers. So without knowing if the battle can be won, the leaf cutters prepare for the worst. Oh. Workers rush to create barricades oh. and seal off as many entrances to their Locate nest the as city. possible to secure their brood. Secure the city. If the leaf cutters are not call, call to Gondor, get to Helm's Deep. Able to repel the invaders, or at least barricade enough of their entrances in time, the army ants swarm the nest, overrunning all opposition. Oh yeah, they're done. They penetrate deep into the hidden chambers Penetrated and steal tens deep. of thousands of the leaf cutters' brood to eat them. Oh gross! Even if the leaf cutter colony survives, this is a heavy blow. They're basically like partial cannibals. Regardless who's won the war, thousands lay slain on the battlefield. When the army ants Those attack, death follows them. But there are other species that form much more dangerous ant armies. Ooh, species ooh. that form super colonies covering thousands of square kilometers. Oh, is, did this video come before the one I just watched? Maybe it was. I couldn't tell exactly the date. It just they were both in the same year, a few years ago. So maybe this one was actually the sequel and the other one was the prequel. Yeah, check that out. It, it is linked down below in the description. Had a lot of fun with that. Over multiple continents, engaging in wars kilometers across. They deserve their own video, though. No matter the scale, and they do. war okay, is, this a is part the of ant existence, be it between huge colonies or small groups trying to fend off a raid. In tropical rainforests, but also in the cracks of the concrete we walk over every day. Humans have decided that war is not a thing that they want to do a lot anymore. For ants, though, the other ant will always be the enemy. No, the ants just get some along, groups man. just don't get along. They should. Come on, peace, brothers. Where was there ever an ant like counterculture? You know, like how humans uh, at the Cold War and after World Wars, the World Wars, were like, dude, let's just focus on chilling. All right, Th there was never ants. Ants never had chill in their millions of years, huh? All right, final thoughts. All right, another interesting video uh, coming from this channel. Um, you know, I never thought ants could, I guess, be so interesting with that. Such a complex, interesting society that shows what kind of things like evolution uh, favors and how they could survive uh, relatively unchanged, especially when it comes to a lot of the evolution um, of ants from what I understand. So, but anyways, it was kind of fun to try to make parallels with the world wars and stuff like that. Uh, let me know if you could think of some interesting parallels as well down below see what other people got and uh maybe this could be a thing because i did think that i did say that there were, i think a few more other ant videos um but yeah if you guys like this uh give it a thumbs up that'll let me know that i should cover more from this channel and maybe this kind of uh, content and with that we'll see y'all next time